and worship God. Come on, put your hands together. Let's bless the Lord. Come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Let me hear y'all clap your hands. Gotta do is stand on his promises. Cause he won't let you down. He'll turn it all around. And if you believe, come on and say yes to me. Shout yeah. Say yes. Say yes to his will. Say yes. Yeah, yeah. Say yes. Cause I can make it.
Cause I'm speaking Speaking Claiming Expecting
I'ma praise him right now. Let your voices shout, I don't have to wait. our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are here because of him. We'll start with Psalm 34, verse 1. Yeah. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yeah. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Thank you for joining us this evening. We got one task for you, no two. The first one is hit the share button. We want to share the gospel with those around the world. When you hit that share button, you never know how far it's going to go and what life it's going to reach. The second thing is get your Bibles out. Get ready to mark the scriptures. That's how the Holy Spirit will teach you and grow you in the word of God. Father, we thank you for your word this evening. Help us to hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us, guiding us, directing us, and ordering our steps according to the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome our pastor, Pastor Alvin Simpkins. Well, God is good. So glad that you're here. Somebody put your hands together and let's just give the Lord a praise for his goodness and all of his mercy. Stretch your elbow all the way up and let's pray together. Father, thank you for your goodness and all your mercy. Thank you for rebuking the devourer. Thank you that you are our help. Somebody just shout, help! You are our help, our shield, and our buckler. So we come with boldness tonight to tell you that we love you, we appreciate you, and we declare the blood. Somebody shout, the blood. The blood of Jesus over our lives. The blood of our children. The blood of our families. The blood of our jobs. The blood of our health. Somebody shout, the blood. The blood of Jesus over our lives tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Give the Lord a hand clap as Elder Ronnie uh, come and lead us in prayer for our children. Thank praise you, Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody from the sound of my voice, whether you're on live screen or on Zoom or in the sanctuary, point your hands toward the children, Lord. Lord, we just want to say thank you for our children, Lord, yes. because the children are our future, Lord. Yes. Lord, we thank you for each and every child because from generation to generation, we pray for our children daily today, Lord. Yes. Lord, we pray that our children will not suffer in this world, Lord, but they will go forth, Lord, that they will be conquerors, Lord, that they will become the doctors and the lawyers, the senators and the governors, even presidents, professional people, Lord, that they will have a long life, Lord, but Lord, but they will serve you, Lord. We thank you for they will be 
all the things that you have called them to do, Lord, because we know that you are the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings, that you keep your eyes on our children both morning, noon, and night, Lord. So we pray for our children wherever they may be at today, Lord, whether it's wherever they may be at right this minute, Lord, we ask that you will continue to watch over them. Lord, we pray for the parents of our children to continue to do what you have called them to do, Lord. Train up a child in the way that they should go, but when they become older, they will not depart from you, Lord. So we pray that our children will be the future, Lord, that they will be the doctors, the lawyers, the pastors, the ministers, the missionaries, whatever your hearts desire, Lord. But we thank you for our children from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Lord. We thank you for each and everything that you're doing for our children, Lord. But, Lord, I know that you are watching over them daily, Lord. So we pray that there no weapon form against them shall prosper, Lord, but they will serve you and serve only you, Lord. And we give you all the praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Hey, come on, put your hands together. Somebody say, bless, 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 bless.
Amen. We are blessed. Take your Bible tonight and let's get right into the word of the Lord. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming out in the middle of the week. The grass wither, the flower will fade, but the Bible says the word of the Lord will stand what? Forever. Take your Bible tonight and uh, let's go right straight to Proverbs chapter 16 and verse number 7. God is a good God. Are you doing things throughout your life? And throughout the day to please the Lord. Are you doing things to bring joy to God's heart? If you bless the Lord there's and bring joy to his heart, there's nothing that he won't do for you. Proverbs, let us all stand for the night for the reading of the word. Proverbs chapter 16. I want to ask my wife to read verse number 7. God is a good God. He loves you. Please read. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. When a man or a woman's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to leave him alone and to be at peace with him. Raise your hand and let's pray about it. Father, we just thank you that we will please you in every area of our lives. And you said that you will rebuke the devourer. You run him off from our lives, run him off from our children, run him off from our careers, run him off from our marriages, run him off from our lives. The blood! Somebody shout the blood, the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. God is a good God. He loves you and everything is going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. And so tonight, let's just go forward and read the word of the Lord and just know it is so important that we do all that we can to please the Lord. When we make it up in our minds that we are going to please the Lord, you'll be amazed at how God will bless your life and how the enemy will leave your life because you are protected, you are cared for, and you are covered by the blood of the Lamb, and God loves you. Somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. As you go through life, doing all that you can to make sure that you please the Lord, he will bless your life. John chapter 8, verse number 29. John chapter 8. Jesus says, John chapter 8, verse 29. He said, and he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. It's so important that we must do the things that brings joy to God's heart. When we bring joy to God's heart, then he will bless our lives. No good thing will he withhold from you. But don't live the rebellious, defiant, and disobedient life. Live a life to bring joy to God's heart. Jesus said, he sent me. But not only that, he is with me. But not only that, he says, I'm not alone. Somebody say, I'm not alone. And then he says, I do those things always that pleases our father when you do the things that please the lord he will bless your life your heart will be lifted joy will come into your life first john chapter number three verse 22 first john chapter three verse 22 and whatsoever we ask we receive of him why because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in God's sight. Whatever you do, find something that brings pleasure to God's heart. Find something that God that makes God happy and he will bless your life. That's why David got all he wanted from the Lord because he was always out there in the wilderness playing and singing to the Lord and dancing before the Lord in front of the bears and the lions and the sheep and everything else. He was doing it for an audience of one and it pleased God and the Lord blessed his life that the, everything he asked God for, he gave it to him. Because he pleased God's heart. You and I must do the same thing. We must live a life that pleased the Lord. When you take time out of your schedule to come by God's house and say, Lord, I'm just checking in. Then it pleases God's heart. And the Lord remember you when the enemy attack your life. Somebody say, I'm blessed. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 16. All down through the Bible, it talks about pleasing our father hebrews chapter 13 verse 16 but to do good and to communicate forget not 
for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased that when we do good things for somebody, when we lift a fallen heart, when we encourage a broken spirit, it is God's heart, and it touches God's heart, and he is pleased. Lift somebody, encourage somebody, be kind to somebody, pray for somebody, and God, and, and God will be pleased with your life, and he'll bless your life. No good thing will he withhold from you. The heart of Jesus was to please the Father. And we must do the same thing as Christians today. You must make it up in your mind that I'm going to please the Lord. Stretch your elbow all the way up with me and everybody say, Lord, teach me how to please you. Say it again. Say, Lord, teach me how to please you. And we have to know that God will send you, that God will bless you. Jesus was about pleasing the Father, doing everything that the Lord asked him to do. It is so important that we do those things that brings joy to God's heart. Somebody say joy. Somebody say joy. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a God that's alive. And he loves us and he's emotional. How do we know? Because the Bible said Jesus wept. And Jesus was God in the flesh. And so our father is, is emotional and he loves us. When we praise him, he gets up from his throne and the Bible says he comes to where you are. He said, because the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. He come right where you are. When the devil attack your life, just start praising the Lord. Lord, I'll give you praise. You don't need music. You don't need anything. But a heart that says, I'm going to praise the Lord. Stretch your elbow up and let's pray together. Everybody say with me. Say, Lord, I give you the praise. We cannot please God by living our own lives. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 4. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 4. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our heart. Don't be a people pleaser. You cannot please people. If you win, won the whole billion dollar lottery or whatever it is, and you come to Denver and say, I'm going to take care of all the homeless, and you set up a facility, a, a building or whatever, put all the homeless in there and take care of them, somebody is going to complain. Somebody is going to say, well, what about the little babies? Somebody is going to complain. So don't worry about it. Don't be a man pleaser. Just make it up in your mind to please the Lord. Somebody say, please the Lord. The Bible said when a man or a woman ways please the Lord, he'll make even their enemies to leave them alone. Somebody say, go now. Say it again. Go now. Go now. And you have to know you cannot do it in the flesh. But you have to do it by the Spirit of the Lord and by the power of the Holy Ghost that reside down inside of you. That God will empower you and help you to live for him and you will not grieve the Holy Spirit. You will not grieve him, but you will live a life of joy. Somebody say joy. Somebody say joy. Elbow your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't be sad. Elbow the other person and say, neighbor. Put on a heart of joy. Somebody say joy. Joy. The Bible said the joy of the Lord is your strength. Somebody say the blood. The blood of Jesus. And you have to know Romans 12 and verse number 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind, I'm just going to follow God. I'm just going to renew my thinking, renew my intellect, renew my neurological pathways, and I'm going to follow the heart of God. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Whatever it is that please God, then God will bless your life. Somebody say, I am blessed. Make up in your mind to please the Lord. You want to be happy? Learn what the triggers are to please your mate. Learn what the triggers are to make your wife happy. Learn what the triggers are to make your husband happy. Learn what the triggers are 
to make your kids happy. And you will live a happy life. You will, live, you will have a happy family. You got to do all that you can to make sure everybody get along. Somebody say, get along. Somebody say, get along. Psalms, one, uh, Psalms 19 and verse 14. Psalms 19 and verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, be pleasing in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You got to pray over your words. Nothing brings sadness to a family like bad words. Nothing brings anger to a man like bad words. Nothing brings anger to a lady like bad words. you got to say, Lord, help me to say the right thing. Lady, learn how to please your husband. Men, learn how to please your wife. Say, start by saying good things. I'm glad you're here. I can't make it without you. I need you in my life. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh, I'm teaching y'all how to rap, and y'all not even writing it down. That's why some people leave the other person. They, because the first thing they say, they never say anything good to me. But you got to learn how to say something good. Somebody say, say something good. You got to tell them, baby, I know you're tired. Sit down right here on my lap. Because you've been running through my mind all day long. Am I in the right church today? Are y'all old and don't know how to rap? You got to know how to rap. I, can't, I couldn't wait. I was speeding all the way to get over here. I praise God I didn't get a ticket because I was coming to see you. Lord have mercy. Somebody say, help. You have to know. You got to find ways to please the Lord. Find ways to bring joy to people's heart that you love and you care about. Find a way. Don't always be the joy stealer. Don't always be the person that's... That, that bring the whole atmosphere down. When you walk in the room, the atmosphere ought to change. Why, Pastor? Because you come in with joy. Somebody say joy. You come in with a smile on your face. I'm just glad to be here. I'm just glad to be in the land of the living because I know somebody that was dead, but I know that I'm still here. Somebody didn't make it through the pandemic, but I'm still here. So I'm just glad to be here. Raise your hand with me all over the house. Put them up and everybody say, Lord, I am glad to be alive. Say it again. I am glad to be alive. How do we please the Lord? I got four strategies for you tonight. How to please the Lord. You got four strategies. Write them down. Text them to somebody. Send an email to somebody. Number one, sacrifice to the Lord. Oh, uh-oh. Sacrifice to the Lord. God told Abraham, I want you to go and sacrifice your only son to me. See, God doesn't really want our sacrifice. He want to know if our heart is right. When Abraham got to the mountain where God told him to sacrifice, he took off all the wood and he took off and built the big fire. And then his son said, where is the sacrifice? And he said, the Lord will provide. And when he got ready to sacrifice his son, the Bible says that he, he said, Abraham, don't touch the boy. Look over in the bush. There's a ram. And he sacrificed the ram for God. God doesn't want what you have. He want to know if your heart is open to just give it up. But some people, when God give them something, they wrap their fingers around it so tight that he have to break their fingers off with lawsuits, with unexpected bills, with problems, with things that broke down, the furnace that broke down, the car engine that goes out, because you got it wrapped so tight that, you, you, that nobody can take it out. You, whenever the Lord gives you something, leave your hand open. Somebody said, leave your hand open. So you don't have to break your fingers off of it. Because all of us know families that God had to break their fingers off of it because they would not, they would not share with anybody. Sacrifice. How do we please God? Sacrifice. God will never move in your life until you learn how to sacrifice. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. And you have to know, Mark chapter 12 and verse number 33, and to love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. 
is more than the whole burnt offering and sacrifice that you can offer to God or anything. But we have to learn how to sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. Hebrew 13, 16, but to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. It pleases the Lord when you sacrifice. When you sacrifice and hold your peace in the midst of an argument in your family. That's a sacrifice. Because some of us like to argue. Do I have anybody in the house that would be bold enough to say, I'm with you, Pastor? Some of us like to argue. But you got to learn how to hold your peace and sacrifice and say, Lord, you will fight my battle. But sometimes your brain just say, no, don't let them get away with that. Talk about their mama. Am I in the right church tonight? But we have to learn how to sacrifice. Raise your hand with me. Put them up. Everybody say, Lord, teach me how to sacrifice. Hold my peace. Hebrews 13, it says, do good. Sacrifice to the Lord. Live in peace. Tithes and offering to God. Sacrifice. And God will move in your life, and he'll answer your prayers, and he'll bless you. Somebody say, I am blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. It is the sacrifices that you give to the Lord. Lord, I'm doing this. I'm holding my peace just to keep the peace in my family. I'm sacrificing my anger. I'm sacrificing telling them what I really think about them. But I'm holding my peace. It's a sacrifice, Lord. Don't forget me. Please help me, Lord. I am sacrificing for the sake of peace. Raise your hand with me all over the house and say, Lord, teach me how to sacrifice. I am blessed. Say it again. I am blessed. Number one, if we're going to please the Lord, you got to learn how to do what? Say it again loud. You got to learn how to do what? One more time so your spirit can hear. You got to learn how to do what? Sacrifice. God moved in Abraham's life. He said, Abraham, from now, I'll make you a father of many nations. And Abraham was blessed. But not only was he blessed, his sons were blessed after him. Because he sacrificed and he did not hold anything too tight for God. He left his hand open. And he said, Lord, you know, as Job said, the Lord gave. And the Lord has what? Taken away. Don't wrap your fingers around anything that the Lord has given you. Just know that God will bless your life. Number two. Number two. How do we please the heart of God? What's number one? What's number one? Sacrifice. What's number one? Sacrifice to the Lord. Give up something. Give up your TV for a week. Lord have mercy. And if you really want to sacrifice, get off social media. Don't go to Instagram. Don't go to TikTok. Don't go to Rick Rock. And don't go to uh, Facebook for a week. And watch how God will bless your life. Number two, how do we please the Lord? In our daily action and how we live. In our daily action and how we what? Live. How you live. The Bible is very clear in Proverbs 16 and verse 7. When a man weighs, please the Lord, he'll make even his enemies to be at peace with him. Please the Lord. Read your Bible. His ways, a man weighs, is his daily action, his daily behavior. What you do at work, a man's ways. The affairs of the day. How you conduct yourself. How you act. And a man ways please the Lord. The Bible said God will take off his belt and chase the enemies away from your life. He'll take, off his, he'll take out his sword and run off that sickness, run off that disease, run off that high blood pressure, run off that cancer, run it off from your life. Somebody shout, run it off. When a man weighs, please the Lord. The Lord will bless your life in your daily affairs. What are you doing to please the Lord? In your private life, 
What are you doing to plead, please the Lord? Somebody say, I need your help. Somebody say, help. Somebody say, help. Somebody say, help. When a man weighs, a woman weighs, please the Lord. He'll make even their enemies to leave them alone. Somebody say, go down. He'll make easy. God will run him off. He'll rebuke the devourer. He'll chase them away from your life. When a man weighs. Ladies, when you get mad at your husband, don't curse him out. Don't be mean. Men, when you get upset with your wife, don't curse her out. Don't talk about mama. Just be nice. Somebody say, be nice. And it takes real grown men, full of the anointing and willing to sacrifice, to hold your peace. And it takes grown women that know the Lord is with them to hold your peace and sacrifice and say, I'm going to please the Lord because I need his help. Somebody say, help. How do you please the Lord in a man's ways? Please the Lord. He'll make even his enemies be at, be at peace with him. In your service to mankind. Be nice. Help somebody. Lift somebody. Be kind to somebody. Give somebody a ride. I'm not talking about the hitchhikers. I'm talking about somebody that you know that need a ride. Just be nice. Somebody said, just be nice. Somebody said, just be nice. Somebody said, just be nice. When we, when our ways please the Lord, the Lord will bless your life. Somebody said, the Lord will bless your life. The Lord will bless your life. I beseech thee, Romans 12 and 1, I beseech thee, brethren and sisters, by the mercies of the Lord, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Somebody said, just be nice. Oh, just elbow somebody real, real easy and say, just be nice. Just be nice. Somebody said, just be nice. Yeah, you, we've all met mean people. We've all been around people that were unnice, unkind. But just, but everybody likes to be around somebody that's nice. Am I right about it? On your job, find somebody that's nice and be nice to them. Don't worry about the person that's always upset and always got a beef going. Leave that person alone. Life itself will catch up with them. Life itself. Let, leave, let them go on at the water fountain and sing all the stuff. Leave them alone. The Bible says in 1 Peter, He that will see good days and live a long life, let him reframe his tongue from evil. You got to learn how to leave them alone. Somebody say, leave them alone. Somebody say, leave them alone. The Lord will take care of them. How many of you know you've been through a problem and the Lord brought you out? How many of you know somebody, you had some haters and the Lord took care of your haters? How many of you know you had some people that didn't like you and the Lord took care of them? Stretch your elbow all the way up and say, Lord, thank you for all your help in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Number three, how do we please the Lord? Number one is what? sacrifice number two is what your daily action and how you live and number three what pleases the lord and the god that we serve is that when we pray for those in authority now this can get tough because when we look across our nation and we look across the land where our leadership runs this great country called america man when they, all the infighting all the, all the beefs that they have with the one party and the other party. Uh, when you look at all that, man, you can say, I don't want to pray for none of them. They all need to be cast into the river. Somebody say amen. But then as a Christian, you have to obey the Bible. And you got to pray for them. Somebody say the blood. Because the greatest threat to America, you heard me say it, it's not Russia. It's not North Korea. It's not China. It is one thing. It's the division between our government leaders that won't work together to feed our soldiers, to feed the elderly, to give their handicap and those their paycheck. That's the greatest threat to America. Somebody say amen. And it, believe me, if you got soldiers that don't get their paycheck, they are not going to show up to battle. And we got problems. Somebody say amen.
And don't let a fool get in the cockpit of that $100 million plane. He might, rather than going to the war front, he might go to the White House. Because he got nothing to lose. We need to pray now. Stretch your elbow all the way up and everybody say, Lord. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord, we need your help. The Bible said we want to please the Lord. That we pray for those in authority. First Peter chapter 2. Verse 1 through 4, I exhort therefore, the Bible says, that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Verse 2 says, for kings, for leaders, and for all that are in authority, that we might lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. And then verse 3 says, for this is good, acceptable, and well-pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior. Somebody said, Lord, help us. Verse 4 says, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Somebody say, save them. We need to pray for our leadership. We need to pray for our churches. We need to pray for our bishops. We need to pray for our pastors. We need to pray for our government. We need to pray for those in the Senate. We need to pray for those in the Congress. We need to pray that, Lord, help them. Somebody say, help. Stretch your elbow all the way up with me. Come on, help me out. Everybody say, Lord, we need your help in America today. In Jesus' name we pray. Division is one of the greatest enemies that we can, we can, we can, we can phantom in our lives. God says, Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. There the Lord command the blessing. There God command the blessing. And when we don't get along, and when we don't unite, like Cain and Abel did not unite, then somebody is in trouble. Cain got in trouble. Somebody say amen. So you have to know in your families, don't you be the lightning rod that causes bitterness. Don't be the lightning rod that causes disagreement. Hear me now. Let me say it. Look at me. Get off your phones. Look at me for a minute. Don't you be the lightning rod in your family that causes division, that causes arguments, that causes disagreements, that causes people to have beefs. God takes it personal. He didn't let Cain get away with it. And he's not going to let you and I get away with it. We're going to bring peace. Tell your neighbor, I'm a peacemaker. The Bible said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the what? Children of God. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Somebody say, I'm blessed. And it will please the Lord. And God will bless your life. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Don't be the lightning rod. Then oh, I got a beef with Sister Sally. I got, I'm upset with Brother Tom. I'm upset with my dad. Let it go. It doesn't matter because you are cursing yourself. That's what's happening to America. We are cursing ourselves because we can't get along. We are blessed and God has been good to us. But yet we cannot get along. And so you have to know that God takes it personal. When families don't get along. When our leadership don't get along. Somebody say, let's get along. Elbow your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm sorry if I said something wrong. Oh, elbow the other person and say, neighbor, forgive me. I want to have unity. There the Lord. Command the blessing. You watch our nation. Mark the words of this old preacher. Watch our nation as we continue to fight. We continue to bicker. In another 35, 40 days, the same issue is going to come up again. Are we going to fund our government? Are we going to pay our soldiers? Are we going to pay our old senior people that built this great nation? Are we going to take care of our children, our babies and Head Start? And are we going to take care of the handicapped, those that can't, and, and those, th those that can't take care of themselves, 
Are we going to just be the nation that care for them? Somebody say amen. And so we, we, we have to pray, church. We cannot point our fingers. We have to pray. I sat down and watched the speaker get kicked out. And I prayed. I said, Lord, help us. We, we, we got problems. They got kicked him out because he funded the government. Lord, we need help because he paid for the soldiers to get their paycheck. He paid for the old people to get their paycheck. That's why. Pay attention. Don't be fooled. Maybe we're being overrun by the border because we are not united. Oh, let me leave that one alone. Somebody say, help. Somebody say, help. How good and pleasant it is. Brethren to dwell together, and we got to pray now. Raise your hand with me, and everybody say, Lord, protect our nation. Say it again. Say, Lord, unite our nation. Say it again. Lord, unite our leadership. We pray the blood. Somebody say the blood. Somebody say the blood. Come on now. Somebody say the blood. The blood of Jesus over our lives today. Somebody say the blood. Somebody say the blood. It's not just a joke. And it's not just somebody grabbing for power. We have to pay attention. And we got to pray. Somebody say pray now. Somebody say pray now. That's why I'm on the prayer line every day saying, Lord, help our nation. Somebody say pray now. So I will not be, so that the Lord will say, I'm, you didn't pray for it. Now. Let the, let the wrath come to your house. I don't want that said about me. I'm going to be on the prayer line every day. Lord, I need your help. And thank you for those of you that are on it with us. We're going to plead the blood. Somebody say the blood. blood. Number four, how do we please the Lord? How do we please the Lord? I close with number four. The way we please the Lord. What's number one? Sacrifice. What's number two? Daily action of how we live. What's number three? Pray for those in authority, our government, our leadership, our pastors, all across the nation, our bishops. Pray for them. They need help. Somebody say help. Somebody say help. Somebody say help. How do we please the Lord? Number four, when we have faith in Jesus and when we have faith in God. What's number four? We please the Lord when we have faith in who? Jesus, and we have faith in who? God, our Father. That's how we please, our, please the Lord. And so, just know, you are on the cutting edge of God's heart because you're saying, I'm making time for my Father. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Without faith, you are here because you believe. Somebody say, I believe. The power in the Christian life is the ability to believe. Lord, I know you're able. Blind Bartimaeus in the Bible was blind. And he was on the side of the road begging. And when he heard Jesus come by, he believed that Jesus could heal him. And he started yelling, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And everybody said, blind Bartimaeus, shut up. Blind Bartimaeus, be quiet. Blind Bartimaeus, you just, you, Jesus want nothing to do with you, boy. But the Bible says, he cried the more, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. He believed. He released his faith. He trusted in Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus stopped, turned around, and said, bring him to me. If he didn't believe, he wouldn't have cried out. He wouldn't have called on Jesus. And he wouldn't have got his eyesight back. Lord, I believe. Raise your hand with me and say, Lord, I believe. Oh, come on, somebody help me. Say, Lord, 
I believe you are able. In Jesus' name, I pray. You got to have faith. The Romans 8 and 8 says, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You got to believe. No matter what the doctor says, you got to believe. The doctor gave my mom up to die. You got to believe. Pushed to the end of the hall. And then she lived, we went all down there and prayed for her. And she lived another 15 plus years. The doctor don't have the final say. But if you believe what he says, more than what the Bible says, you will die in your faithlessness. But if you believe, Lord, you are able. Somebody say, you are able. Somebody say, you are able. I know people in our church that had cancer. But they believe. They got on the prayer line and prayed. And the day they are still here serving the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. You don't believe me? Call Esther Clifford. She had breast cancer and the Lord healed her. She's still here running our food ministry, doing a phenomenal job. Somebody say, I believe. Somebody say, I believe. You got to believe that the Lord is able. You got to believe. You got to have faith for your future. That's what your belief says. I have faith for my future. It says I'm going to always believe. Somebody say I'm always going to believe. Somebody say it is possible. Somebody say it is possible. Somebody say it's my season. It's my time. I am blessed. You got to always, when you have faith, Come to thank the Lord. Lord, thank you. Before you start begging for anything, Lord, thank you that you allowed me to live through the pandemic. We all went to funerals of somebody died in the pandemic. But I, well, every day we must say thank you that I'm still here. Somebody say thank you that I'm still here. Every day we got to say thank you. Thank God in advance. Don't wait until the battle is over. What you going to do? Shout now. Somebody say, shout now. Somebody say, shout now. Don't wait until the battle is over. Shout now. The Lord is my help. Somebody say, help. We can't afford in this hour to be silent. We can't afford to be silent. The Bible says, let the redeemed. Of the Lord, what? Say so. You got to declare, Lord, I believe. You, you got to declare, Lord, I believe. And I trust in you with all of my heart. I believe. And I'm going to walk by faith and not by what? Sight. And you have to know that all your help comes from above. That's why every service, we stretch our elbows all the way up. And we open our mouths real wide. And we shout, what? Help! Somebody help me. Stretch your elbow all the way up. Open your mouth real wide. And we're going to shout, what? Help! All of our help comes from the Lord. And if you know the Lord's been good to you, then you ought to shout, help! Somebody say, help! And the Bible says in uh, Philippians 2 and verse number 16, work out your own soul salvation don't look at nobody else pay attention to your own life don't look at nobody else just declare the Lord is on my side I'm going to work out my own soul salvation I'm going to pray every day go witness to those that are unsaved we're going to read God's word and meditate on it and we're going to do all we can to obey the law and stop at the stop sign and we're going to do all we can to give the Lord praise Somebody say praise him. Somebody say praise him. When you get to your house tonight, say, Lord, thank you. I praise you that I got a roof over my head. I'm not under the bridge. I'm not in a homeless shelter. Oh, God, I'm not sleeping in my car. I'm not in the van. But I got a roof over my head. And I just want to say thank you. I just want to say I bless you. I just want to say I praise you. I want to say I love you. And I appreciate you. 
for all your blessings. Somebody say, I am blessed. Come on, help me say, I am blessed. And when you know the Lord has been good to you, you're not ashamed to give him praise. When you know the Lord brought you from a mighty long ways, you're not ashamed to open your mouth. When you know if it had not been the Lord who was on your side, you would have never made it. But I'm so glad that I come too far to be silent because the Lord is on our side. Somebody shout help. Come on, shout help. Come on, shout help. The Lord is our help. The Lord is our shield. The Lord is our buckler. David said in Psalm 120, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Make us to lie down in green pastures. Lead us beside the steel waters. He restore our soul. Lead us in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with us. Your rod, your staff, it comfort us. You prepare a table before us in the presence of of our enemies, you anointed our head with oil. Our cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Somebody say, I am blessed. Somebody say, I am empowered somebody say i am favored i have favor you have favor the favor of the lord be upon your life the favor of the lord be upon your children the favor of the lord be upon your finances somebody say favor somebody say favor now give the lord a hand clap thank you i please the lord when i give him praise i please the lord when I worship him, I please the Lord. When I shout to him, I please the Lord. When I serve him with gladness in my heart. Somebody say, I am blessed. Say it again, I am blessed. Come on, help me holler. I am blessed. Help me one more time. I am blessed. Now give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your help. In Jesus' name I pray. Give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you, Father, for all your help in my life. Stand up on your feet tonight. Stand up on your feet and let's pray together. The Lord is our help. Somebody said, the Lord is my help. How do we please the Lord? Number one is what? Give him a sacrifice of praise. None of us feel like praising him. But you give him a sacrifice of praise. How do we please the Lord? Daily actions and how we live. Number three, how do we please the Lord? Pray for authority. Pray for those in authority. Go home tonight, turn on CNN. They're going to be talking about the division in our nation. Pray for them. Then number four, have faith and believe. Somebody say, I believe. Somebody say, I believe. Somebody say, I believe the Lord is going to bless my life. Somebody say, I believe. Raise your hand with me and say, Lord, I believe. Say it again, Lord, I believe. Say it again, Lord, I believe. And when you believe, no devil in hell can stop you. No sickness can hold you down. No disease can take you to the grave. Lord, I believe. Somebody say, I believe. Somebody say, I believe. I'm here tonight not to preach to you. I'm here because I believe. And I see what's coming to our nation. And all of us need to pray. Lord, we need your help. Somebody say, we need your help. Somebody say, we need your help. Any Christian with foresight can see the storm on the horizon. I need your help. This is our set time to pray. This is our season to ask God for help. Somebody say help. Somebody say help. Somebody say help. 
When you look at the history of nations in the Bible, America is nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. I'm bothered by that. What does that mean? That we're going to be wiped off the earth? What does that mean? That, that God is going to clear us like he did the tribe of Dan? The tribe of Dan is nowhere mentioned in Revelation when all the 12 tribes come together because they worship idol gods and God gently wiped them off. Go to Revelation and read the 12 tribes. You will not see Dan there. Go back into the Old Testament and, and Exodus and, and, and Deuteronomy. You'll see the tribe of Dan there. But just know, they didn't serve the Lord and they did not end up. Where's America? What does all the infighting mean? What does it mean, the Russian on the border? What does it mean? We need to pray. Rome is in the Bible. Greece is in the Bible. Europe is in the Bible. But America is nowhere to be found. Lest you think you are safe, listen to the voice of the preacher. We need to pray. Look at your neighbor and say, we need to pray. Somebody said, we need to pray. Russia's in the Bible. Called Gog and Magog. America is nowhere to be found. Lest we think we are secure. I'm going to find my little butt in church every time the doors open. Yes, I am. And when I'm not in this pulpit, I'm going to be sitting in the back row at somebody's church. Because there's a, there's a storm on the horizon. And we got to be wise people. And we got to pray. Prayer will protect you. When Israel went away from God, when they got on their knees and repented, obeyed and prayed, then God cleared off all their enemies away from them. Lest we think that we got it all together in America, we need to pray. Somebody said, pray now. Somebody said, pray now. I'm bothered by that. I've been looking through my Bible. Where is America? It's nowhere to be found. Lord, what does that mean? We need to pray. Raise your hands all over the house. Everybody say with me, say, Lord, I repent of all of my sin. Say it again, say, Lord, I need your help. I need your favor. I need your blessings. Thank you for everlasting life. Everybody say, Lord, I rededicate. I recommit my family, my children. Everything that I own to you, you are my source of total supply. Say it again. You are my source of total supply. I need your help. Somebody say, I need your help. Somebody say, I need your help. Somebody say, thank you for keeping us alive. Say it again. Thank you. You are my source. Of total supply, I rededicate my life, my family, my children, and all that I have to Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. I thank you every curse. Come on, help me say, I thank you. Every curse is broken over our lives. We live under the blessing. Of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We live in the shadow of the Almighty God. We are close by. He is close by. We are your children. In Jesus' name I pray. Turn around and give somebody a hug and tell them you're going to be all right. Just put your arms around them. Oh, I know. Put your arms around them. Put your hand on their shoulder. Tell them you're going to be all right. 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 The Lord is our source. Oh, somebody shout, help. Help. 
You may be seated. I'll have you out in a few minutes. But just know, God is a good God, and he loves you, and everything is going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. That's why you give. That's why you give. Because just know, maybe it's the work of the church that is holding back evil from this great land. Maybe it's the prayers of the saints. Maybe it's the tithes of men and women. Because God said, if you tithe, I rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he'll not destroy your land. And he said, but if you don't, you'll be cursed with the curse. So as you give tonight, ushers come forward, give everybody an envelope. Everybody give something. Everybody give something. Ushers come forward, give everybody an envelope. Everybody give something because the Lord is on our side. Somebody said, the Lord is on my side. Job 36, in verse number 11, if they obey and serve him, they'll spend their days in prosperity. And their years in pleasure, God will take care of you. Somebody said, the Lord's going to take care of me. On the back of your envelope, I brought mine. On the back of your envelope, just write, God, thank you for your provision. Thank you for your provision. Thank you. In this season, in this set time in America today, if there's anything I would do is put the Lord first. If there's anything that we must do is put the Lord, what? First. Put him first. And he'll bless your life. Somebody say, I am blessed. Say it again, I am blessed. Thank you for your unselfish giving, for your sacrificial giving to the kingdom of God. We need the church in America today. We need God in our nation. We need God in our schools. We need God. In every area of our lives. Somebody say, I am blessed. ABC, always be connected. Stay connected. It's like your cell phone. Your cell phone is nothing and no power if you don't connect it and charge it up. Elbow your neighbor and say, always be connected. Stay connected to God. You might be on your job. I'm working and I can't come to Wednesday night service. Okay. What happens when that job goes away? Somebody say amen. Put the Lord first. Put him first. And he'll bless your life. Let us all stand. If you're giving, make your check payable to Emmanuel Christian Center. God will give it back to you. Hold your gifts up to the Lord. And everybody say it with me. Say it with me. Pull your gifts up and everybody say, Lord, I give into your kingdom. I believe by faith you're going to give it back to me a thousand times more. I declare you are my source of total supply. Thank you. I give into your kingdom. I'm going forward in every area of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. God is a good God. He loves you. Come and lay it on the altar as an act of faith. Thank you. And stir up your faith. Believe. Trust.
Set your elbow all the way up and everybody say, Lord, thank you that I will have a heart to please you in every area of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Would you welcome Minister Tracy Walker as she leads us in prayer and the blessing. I look forward to seeing you in church on Sunday morning. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, yeah. saying on this wise, Ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up, lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And I will put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Oh, Father God, we thank you for the night, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for the word, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you have given us a heart to chase after you, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God. Bless everyone in Emmanuel Christian Center. Bless us, oh God, as we come in. Bless us as we go out, oh God. Bless us, oh God, our children, oh God, and our children's children, Father. Father God. And Lord, we will give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, oh God. Thank you, Father God. Every day we say thank you, Father, because we know that we didn't get here without you. So we say thank you. We say thank you. Thank you. And amen.